win. How do you see this one shaping up? Um, I got it totally wrong the last time, obviously. Uh, I thought Rangers were outstanding on the day. They came out, they fought tooth and nail with Celtic, they stood up to them. Um, and they won the game, as you said, albeit on penalties. But to think the levels that they'd come from and where Celtic were, I think they were already league champions or very much almost over the line. I see this game as, again, a Celtic win. I think in terms of um, Rangers fans being worried about being, you know, uh, it being embarrassing again, I think it's down to the players to stop that happening. I think that it was a total sort of... Um, they were annihilated at Celtic Park and it would have been embarrassing for the players and, and the supporters, of course. Only only one person, only sorry, only the team can change that. You know, Mark Warburton can set them up, he can give them advice, but it's only the, the Rangers players, them 11 players that go out on that field. If they play like they did in the previous semi-final, um, then I still think that Celtic will win the game. Um, and this is what I expected, Peter. You know, Rangers, where they've come from, um, I think they should be targeting a top six place. I know because of that rivalry, Celtic Rangers has always been pretty much, you know, touch and go, this, that and the other. But what Rangers have been through in terms of the financial problems that they've had, they've changed the manager several times. They've got problems at the minute with certain individual players. I think this season should be a, a stabilising sort of form for them. They shouldn't even be thinking of getting even close at the minute to Celtic because where Celtic are right now is they're on a different playing field. They really, really are. And yes, they beat them in, in the semi-final last season, but <clears throat> I just feel that um, this is as well. One of the reasons why Ronnie Dyla left his post because he failed to win trebles at the football club. He failed when there was no Rangers, there was no Hearts, there was no Hibs. So Celtic were in the ascendancy. They should have won trebles. Um, and now, of course, you know, you've got Brendan Rodgers, who's <coughs> qualified for the Champions League, which, which Ronnie failed to do. And, and this trophy at the weekend will be the first trophy. I know they've, they've still got the final to come if they can get through the semis. Will be the first trophy, you know, on, on course to that, to that famous treble, if you like. Uh, and it's important that Celtic win, win trebles because there's not, not many have been done in the past. And, um, but I, I just see the game as, as a Celtic win. I think it'll be competitive. There'll be lots of tackles flying in. Again, you're going to need a strong referee. But these are the games the players enjoy. You know, they really do. And Rangers players won't want to be embarrassed again. Um, let me talk about two particular players. You, you've um, talked about the, the key players, you know, the Scott Sinclairs, the Moussa Dembele. Uh, Dembele is one of those players that suddenly has caught everybody's attention. Um, do you think, uh, I mean, what would your advice be to him? Because already you're starting to see a lot of people, scouts, thinking they could get him, if not January transfer window, maybe the summer. What would your advice be to him? Just stay where you are, keep scoring goals. You're, you're playing in front of 60,000 people every week. You know, you're, you're adored by the Celtic faithful. Um, it's actually happened quicker than what I thought it would because he came up for £500,000. He was bought maybe to play when Lee Griffiths suffers a little bit of form. Brendan's got him in the team quite early in his Celtic career and he's been, he's been a revelation. He's been absolutely magnificent. Uh, the other person, <clears throat> thankfully, is not part of what it was, <clears throat> what became a a, a sideshow, a circus um, ahead of the last Old Firm game, which is of course Joey Barton. He's in a situation now where there's a standoff, um, where it doesn't look as if he's going to play for Rangers again. And and I get the feeling Rangers are possibly waiting until January till they sell him and cut the umbilical cord on this mess. Mark Warburton has to take responsibility for this. He cannot be ducking questions. He cannot be not talking to the press because it's his signing. He wanted to bring Joey Barton to the football club. It's his, his neck is on the chopping block, Mark Warburton, because of this signing. Has to be. Because he knew what Joey Barton was. He knew he's very opinionated. He's one that speaks up in the dressing room. Um, as a footballer, he was Championship Player of the Year last season for Burnley. So he came on the crest of a wave. He had offers from other clubs. No, Mark Warburton sold Rangers Football Club to Joey Barton. He came, the fans were up in arms about it. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. I don't mind people saying things, but you've got to then carry it off. 
I don't mind. I've said things for nine years in my column. Sometimes you get it wrong, sometimes you get it right. You don't get many pats on the back for getting it right, but you get slated for getting it wrong, by the way. But would you think Joey maybe oversteps the mark? When you actually have a go at the manager, you can follow it with players till you're blue in the face, but when you actually maybe question the manager, that's a fine line, John, where there's only, there only seems to be one winner. Yeah, but don't you think Joey would have questioned Harry Redknapp? Don't you think Joey would have questioned Mark Hughes, his two managers at Man City and at QPR? Don't you think Joey Barton would have questioned Sean Dyche last season at Burnley? Yes, that's what Joey Barton brings. He's opinionated. He's, uh, he, he wants to show people that he's the top man. I think one of the things that probably went against Joey a little bit was the first couple of weeks when he arrived, you put that famous Scotland Rangers programme on, what's happened at Rangers over the last 10 years, mm. where you had Graham Souness, who was instrumental at Rangers. Joey's probably looked at that and thought that can have the same effect. You know, and obviously he's gone in, he's tried to, you know, raise his voice at a few. And Mark, Bo Mark Warburton has took ambience to that and he's suspended him. Um, I'm not sure whether there's a way back. I think it's difficult now to work together. There's a lot, lot, of, uh, lot of water gone under the bridge. Um, if Mark is, is, is looking himself in the mirror, he has to realise that he's the one who brought Joey Barton to the football club, so he has to be held ac accountable for this, and he has to answer questions, certainly on, on what he feels Joey's future is, what the club feels about Joey's future. He is the manager of the Rangers Football Club. Other Rangers managers would have dealt with this, nipped it in the bud, Graeme Souness, Walter Smith, these type of people. So Mark, if he's strong, that's what he has to do. So with that in mind, how do you see the Old Firm game panning out then? Who's going to be celebrating a, a place in the League Cup final and why? Well, it'll be Celtic. Why? Because they've got better players. I think they're in the ascendancy. They're, they're in a good moment. Rangers have a week to prepare. <clears throat> they can get on the training ground. They can gather all their thoughts. Mark can try different sort of formations. He's got time to work this week. The players can get over a few knocks that they've picked up in recent weeks. Kenny Miller, of course, scored his 100th goal. Well done for Kenny. I knew what that meant for me to get 100 goals for Celtic. Um, but I just think Celtic, overall, the better team, um, the team that have got a bit more flair, the likes of Dembele, Scott Sinclair, um, you know, Forrest on one wing, Sinclair, and they look very, very strong. They've got Lee Griffiths to come off the bench, and he's chomping at the bit to get a game. It's a semi-final, red-hot atmosphere, as they always are. I love these games. I scored goals in these games. And this is where you really adhere yourself to the crowd. The top players, the best players in that Celtic team will come to the fore and the Rangers team. They need several of their players. They need seven or eight of their players to play at their maximum. And, and Celtic obviously need to do the same. But I, I see it. You know, I think you'd be, uh, unless you were a hardened, staunch Rangers man, or you've got blinkers on, you don't see anything else outside of that, they will only be the people that think Rangers can win.